And here we go. Okay. Coming to you from Kalamazoo Valley Community College, we'd like to speak to you today about strengthening our My Workforce Data Discovery Project, and our project was specific to law enforcement programs. We revisit our goal for this project. It was that Kalamazoo Valley would help provide equitable access to law enforcement programs and all students in our Valley community. And you can see at the picture at bottom left, our service area covers several counties, including Kalamazoo, Van Buren, Berrien, Cass, St. Joseph, Calhoun, and Barry. Essentially the Southwest lower corner of the state of Michigan. And within those areas, we have things ranging from small to medium urban populations up to large rural expanses. So it's quite a geography and that's part of what we'll speak about today. Just really quickly, these are our key takeaways from doing this project. Public percep perception remains a significant challenge in law enforcement. That's an external factor. That's something that we all need to appreciate and understand. Secondly, recruitment and entry challenges discriminate against some of those lower income, lesser educated population segments that we hope to improve when we talk about our service area. And that's important because our entire service area can benefit from increased law enforcement education, not just the urban areas that we often think of from a policing community, but also those larger rural communities. Communication of the long-term satisfaction for both law enforcement and potential growth opportunities really needs to increase and improve. That's something that we saw doing this study and that's an area we hope to capitalize upon. And then at a larger global picture, career-oriented programs such as law enforcement and others can positively change barriers to education and the living wage when we look at ALICE data, things that we recognize that people can survive upon without requiring a bachelor's or a graduate education. Just a snapshot then at Kalamazoo Valley. This is our mission statement that we just adopted in June of 2022, and it does focus on equitable opportunities and empowering all to learn and grow. And at the left, you see a snapshot from our IPEDS data from 2020-21. Our enrollment is around the 10,000 mark. We are largely a part-time institution. We do have significant enrollment in some of our workforce development or career academies of which our police academy is part of. And we do award a significant amount of associate degrees. When we start to look at the population and access within our area, our student demographics and our service area population provided in the workbook data are similar with respect to the breakdown of the racial and ethnic distribution. So on the right is a demographic snapshot from our IPEDS data of students of all of our college. And on the left is some of the data provided from the workbook from the data collection. And keeping in mind again that we cover such a large geographical area, this is part of our challenge. We have different pockets of areas where these numbers are skewed or lean towards different underrepresented groups. And that's part of our challenge today to understand. And that's emphasized when we look at the poverty and ALICE data. This confirms that equitable access is a barrier. It's hard to streamline some of these different programs and operations to satisfy across all the different observed educational demographics that we see. So when we drill down closer to levels of poverty or our ALICE data, we see that those do hit in some of the demographics that are associated with underrepresented groups. And when we look at our medium household income in our service area, which is shown on the graph on the right-hand side, we note that some of those underrepresented groups do not make it to that, that median target or that level. And we believe that providing some of this law enforcement programming is definitely an area that will help improve those targets. I'm gonna pass it over now to my partner on this, Karen Rivard. Okay, thanks, Mark. Uh, so this uh, is basically identifying some entry barriers that we have um, in the law enforcement career in general. Um, those four, uh, numbers right there as far as what the issues are 
for barriers. Number one is the criminal record. We see, uh, unfortunately, that a lot of our underrepresented groups um, tend to uh, sometimes have a criminal record, which would preclude you from uh, being entered into the law enforcement career. Um, the mandatory drug testing, as well as the physical condition needed uh, to pass and meet training expectations, as well as uh, just the benchmarks in reading and writing are all barriers uh, that the law enforcement career has. Um, what we're trying to do with listing those out is that we're trying to understand ways in which we can uh, help those folks overcome these barriers. Um, and it's obvious that this is more difficult in our lower income, lesser educated segments. So what we're trying to do is communicate early and often uh, regarding all four uh, of those items. If we can uh, keep that communication steady, we can hopefully get folks to be able to meet those benchmarks, all four of them. You can switch, Mark. So uh, the next the next thing here is looking at uh, some more insight as far as the population, the education, and then access. Uh, what does what does equity mean to law enforcement is obviously the question. And when we look at uh, the entry and the exit pathways for law enforcement or criminal justice, um, some examples of that are the police academy, uh, obviously a bachelor's of science in criminal justice, uh, but also we have uh, another pathway that we are trying to explore right now, which would involve uh, dealing with that two-year gap that most of our students have when they graduate from the community college uh, and they're about 19 years old and can't obtain employment with a police department in this area until they're 21. And the hope is that we can work with our community partners, our agencies, and put together uh, a cadet officer program that would enable those folks to be employed, making a living wage, and then also uh, fill that gap so that they can uh, become gainfully employed at a police department uh, after they turn 21 or right when they turn 21. Um, obviously, we want our entrance to be reflective of the community, um, the college, the department, and the service area. And that service area uh, is extremely challenging, as Mark has said. Uh, we do have uh, a very different outlook uh, based on looking at the rural versus the urban comparison. Uh, pretty much our largest urban area is the city of Kalamazoo and it stretches out from there to uh, very rural, uh, almost predominantly rural. There's some smaller, maybe some mid-sized uh, townships and communities, but there's a significant amount of rural areas, which is difficult uh, for us and for the students uh, just because of access, because of proximity. Uh, we want to get students enrolled in our early middle college uh, program or have them become dual enrolled students. But a lot of the time, just their proximity to their, to their own high school is uh, very, very far. And then add in the proximity to get to KVCC, it's even harder. So uh, our hope is that we can begin partnering earlier with the schools and the communities and try to get uh, more of the uh, students that fit into these um, four segments uh, into the law enforcement career and get them in there earlier so that they're looking at it as a path that they can achieve uh, when they graduate from college and potentially have very gainful employment, as we know from all of the numbers that we've learned uh, through this process. Next slide. So what we think success uh, may look like or what we hope can help us um, achieve some success is number one, community supported recruitment events. We just recently had one uh, here at the college in October and we have another uh, very, it's actually going to be twice the size of the one in October uh, in November, trying to bring in 
uh, more of our partners and recruit our students right here at the college. If we can increase our enrollment uh, through that, we can specifically uh, address a lot of these underrepresented service areas. Uh, we want to increase our transfer options as well, not only into the police academy and into our four-year institutions, but also uh, to the job front uh, in other jobs that are available, whether it be probation, whether it be parole, whether it be through the courts. And uh, finally, uh, we hope to further our success by continuing to uh, work together with our non-credit partners uh, doing the uh, police academy, the corrections academy, and our credit program. The more that we can work together, uh, the more that we can achieve our goals that we've outlined here. So when we start to think about some of our next steps, what might we do to try to achieve some of those goals? The first step that we're looking into is validating our data, validating what is actually occurring in our service area versus some of the reported data. Some of the reported data might be dated. We've had a pandemic event occur. It could be influenced by some of the different individuals who choose to report. So some of what we're working on now is speaking with our local law enforcement membership to try to get some actual salaries, some actual wage and benefits, and some understanding of what education is required. As Karen mentioned earlier, we're revisiting some of our communication strategies and some of those service areas. We want to get engaged as soon as we can. We want to have as many touch points as possible, whether that's at the high school, or inside some kind of community recruitment event. And we're also looking at some of those different entry and exit points, such as the security gap that she alluded to, where we can create a, a place for students to get some practical experience while they're moving from being in high school to be eligible for police academy or to move forward into some kind of criminal justice program. And then lastly, like in many things, we need to stay relevant. So we're continually looking at our curriculum to make sure it's current with the current events in the world. We're looking at different options of technology. Can we do more things with the virtual space to reinforce some practical learning? And we're looking at different things that our partners are offering in their spaces to make sure that we're staying relevant to their needs. Just coming back then again to our key takeaways as we wrap this up, public perception is something that everyone in law enforcement has to work with. That's an external or an environmental control, but we're all under those pressures so we can learn to accommodate that. We spoke a little bit about some different recruitment and entry challenges that we hope to capitalize upon, the significance of the size and geography of our service area, different ways to make some of these communication practices to make sure that we can communicate and share some of the different opportunities to those who maybe are not represented. And then largely look at how we can take this program and other programs that are career oriented and help people get out of that poverty or that Alice living wage level and move up into something that they can have a positive relationship with their community. We appreciate you giving us some time today. This is an ongoing project. We plan to report out more with the group as we continue to participate in this process. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us through the link below, which takes you to our public service page and shows you some of our law enforcement and criminal justice programs. Appreciate your time today and thank you. Thank you.